Blessings and love, beautiful beings. My name is Maruma Tu, and you are watching Sun Soul Astrology. Today is going to be part four of Hacking the Universe series that I started about two years ago, specifically talking about the RH negative blood groups, and even more specifically, the O negative blood group, because that is what I am. I am RH negative, but O. And this is my personal experience that I've been speaking from, and all that I have learned learned throughout my studies and, and really gathering information. I do do coaching with RH negative blood types. So I have encountered many just through working with them also in my life. And I also do starseed DNA lineage where I can take your astrology chart and identify where you are from with your starseed lineage. And this includes not just other planets, but also other galaxies and universes. So this is an in-depth informational about how all of this fits together and what we can do. Now, I'm not only going to be talking about the blood groups today and not just about RH negative, but about a specific set of individuals that we consider ourselves to be those star seeds who did come here to planet Earth in order to assist humanity in the evolutionary process. And what that means whenever you awaken to your mission and you start to activate your DNA and all of a sudden you find yourself under a massive level of attack. Now, these attacks are something that I've spoken in great depth about throughout my time on YouTube, but more specifically, I've always referenced them as the RH negative blood groups, and it's not just specific to them. Okay, so what we're going to be going into today is a little bit more background on myself and then how to really look at yourself and take your power back. This is one of the main things that is always discussed here on Sun Soul Astrology. And this is the main importance of everything that we're going through at the moment as far as planetary evolution and planetary transits that are happening above us and as above, so below, because it's a reflection of what is inside occurring on the outside. And that is always the basis of information that we are meant to start at is that we are literally our own what I call perception generating filter PGF for short and it's the awareness that only you can see and hear and smell and think and define and vibe in your vibe therefore you're the only person the only individual who can perceive through your own filter and at the end of the day that's kind of all that we are we are perception generating filters creating the holographic reality that we see around us and how we see our environment is incredibly indicative of the experiences that we are having within it. Those are what trigger our emotions, therefore triggering the chemical responses in our body to therefore make up the reality around us. So whenever we are in distress or disease, we have to look at how we are perceiving the matrix around us and we have to then adjust our filter to come back to center. And within the community of those who are, you know, let's just call it open-minded. I don't even want to label it as a spiritual community because there is a lot of information out there. We live with the internet. We can type anything in at any moment. Of course, that's how you came across this video. And we can find information on the topic that we're looking for. Many topics have very um, strong belief structures and very um, big rule sets, okay? Like you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to believe this, you have to believe that. And to go into some more information about me at this point, I am a walk-in, okay? If you're not familiar with a walk-in, what a walk-in is, it's easiest to define it as reincarnation into a body that was already existing. 
Now, there's a couple of different kinds, but me personally, I only speak from my own experience in this, and I am what you call a full soul transfer, but I didn't necessarily reincarnate. I stepped into this body as the body at the age of 23 was passing away. The body had acquired salmonella poisoning and was in the hospital and actually had to be revived by the crash cart, and as she passed away i stepped into her body so i got here at the age of 23 for this avatar body suit which i also call the flesh suit and i did not come with the original soul's memories or experiences therefore i didn't come in with the social cultural programming that had already been indoctrinated into her so i've had my own experiences and trust me i've been through plenty of them but as soon as I got here, I started to really dive deep into quantum physics and also discovering why I chose this body to incarnate into. And that's what led me into all of the information about the RH negative blood type. And the RH negative blood type, of course, it's a bloodline, right? So bloodlines go into the family trees of everything that has to do with genealogy. But a lot of us who have been in this for a long time are familiar with documentaries such as The Ring of Power and Zeitgeist and all of that. That was a lot of jump off point for many people, you know, there in the mid 2000s. And we understand that the bloodlines are the controlling ruling family, the royal bloodlines. And as we've gone through time we have basically spread out across the planet and we have basically separated a lot from those lines and much of our history has been a race to us we're not aware of it and that's not just as individuals within our own families but that's as a global society so unless your family like my original soul's mother was very into astro or <laughs> genealogy, I almost said astrology, which is what I'm into. Um, but she had studied genealogy for over 25 years and doing it by pounding the pavement, basically, she would drive to the Mormon church in LA every weekend and just bury her nose in all of the books as they kept the best records for all of this information. And she traced her entire line back to uh, Amun-Ra, which is the first sun god of Egypt. And now there's a lot of different connotation that goes with that, but it followed all of the royal bloodline through the kings and queens. And as they spread out and traveled into Europe and became you know, the British family and all of that. So I've mentioned many times for those of you who are already familiar with me, this may be your very first time. And it's like Queen Elizabeth is my third cousin. So it's not very far <laughs> removed from this entire conversation of uh, really having a strong amount of what we would call Illuminati blue blood. And of course, the royal family is linked to the Anunnaki, which is of course reptilian in nature and everybody has their own ideas of that as well but what it is is for me it is about dna okay so dna we need to have these bodies that are of a match to be able to house the dna signature as well as the energetic signature of a soul who's coming in now, whether we have started from birth or we have walked in, it really doesn't matter. And also at the same time, you know, I'm the only one that I've actually met that is a full soul transfer. None of the original soul is here with me. It's just me. And I have my memories from where I came from. I came from Sirius B, located in the constellation of Canis Major. And that's why, you know, I'm rocking my Sirius Starseed sweater from Pimp My Matrix, which is actually my clothing line to really kind of just state your, state your beeswax while you're here, you know, pimp your matrix and make this your own experience. But to continue on with all of this information, 
I literally haven't come across anyone else who has this experience. So yes, it is very abstract. Yes, it is one of those things that a lot of people have many questions about because no, my soul on Sirius did not pass away in order to have this physical experience here. I am absolutely aware of why I came here and what my intention was, you know? So it's like there was a purpose, there was a call. And all of us at whatever point during our soul's experience through um, its own evolution has heard the call, okay? And we have come here through whatever method that we have landed on planet Earth to assist humanity in the evolutionary process. Now through this, we have incarnated into specific bloodlines. These bloodlines do definitely correlate to the different star seed locations that are spread across the Milky Way and beyond. And just as an example, yes, we have Sirius. Sirius does not have um, a location for B and C as far as degrees. If you're familiar with astrology, this isn't the terms that I'm speaking of, the astronomical location of of where the planets are located and also the different star systems okay so we have the Syrians we do have the location for Sirius A which is 14 degrees of cancer associated with the zodiac sign and I'm not going to go breaking all this part down too much because this is what starts to confuse people the actual constellations themselves are not uh, referenced by the actual zodiac signs themselves and it can get a little confusing but this is something that I do on a daily basis I also operate something called sunsoul.tv which you can look up on your web browser I do quantum astrology where I blend quantum physics with Western astrology using an equal house system based off of the rising sign and I also include all of the starseed DNA lineage information as the planet transit and activate those locations and what that really means for us as the individuals down here uh, living this simulation out right so the Syrians the Pleiadians those who are from Vega also Lyra Cygnus star seeds Ophiuchus star seeds and Taurus Aldebaran Regulus Formulant and there's a, a bunch of others, <laughs> a bunch of others like the Zetas, Zeta Reticuli 2, Alpha Draconis, the Dracos. Also, um, I feel like I'm forgetting some big ones. Yeah, the Hadians, also the Orions, of course, you know, so there, there's many. And these associations definitely dictate a lot about the particular bloodlines. And for instance, Cygnus, this is a big one that people have heard me speak of because through my experience of working with star seeds and RH negative blood types, this is where the heaviest concentration of them come from. And those who inhabit Cygnus are actually refugees who originally started off in the Pleiades star system as well as Sirius and also Orion. And and they are humanoid as well as reptilians and dino reptilian humanoid hybrids okay so yeah there's a kind of a plethora of different things going on with Cygnus but the whole point of this is to, to tie some connections about what information can do to really assist you because where we're going to go into at the moment is that there is a heavy level of attack and this has been the basis of everything that I've you know, really work to bring through this series of videos is the awareness of these attacks. They don't just happen to the RH negative blood groups. It also happens to the RH positives as RH negative is a recessive gene. If you're curious as to what I'm talking about, you can definitely go back into my videos and you can check them out. They're the top three listed on the main page here at Sun Soul Astrology as they are the most popular videos that I have um, ever put out, you know, so people are looking for this information and ways to assist themselves with it. Now, these attacks come from many different avenues in our lives. The biggest one is through our relationships and also our dream state. And the infiltrations come through either um, parasitic 
parasitic attacks or implants. And there's other ways that people call them Archon implants is a big one. And the reason that these implants exist within our physical and org field is mainly for tracking. So I did mention that my mom was into genealogy and she did it the hard way, right? She did it uh, looking through the books and researching without technology, without the internet. Nowadays, everything that we do is very much cataloged. So whenever we donate blood or we get the DNA test from tracking your lineage to see what percentage of what nationality are you, that definitely puts you into the registry. And many beings who are born into certain bloodlines are already cataloged from birth. And so we are already tracked. We are already what we call also gang stalked. And we are highly infiltrated with some of the most craziest real life experiences that you have ever heard, rendering a lot of us to seem totally off of our rockers, batshit crazy, or just loopy lepito for just nutballs cray crayness. And that definitely starts to wear on people over time time because we, we don't come into this reality necessarily always being aware that there's something incredibly unique and super different about us because we think that everybody else is just like us. So even if you do grow up having, you know, the ability to see um, Claire, Claire audience, Claire visual, Claire sentient, uh, you know, be, be able to use telekinesis and also telepathy, all of those things that are psychically attached, you know, we, we call it mysticism, we call it magic, we call it the occult, we call it evil. <laughs> um, people have been prosecuted all throughout time of human history for having these natural gifts and attributes that are a part of uh, an advanced soul in its own reincarnational experience. And there, there's a play on all of that. We, we've looked at reincarnation as a linear event, but it's not. There's so many beings who are here from future timelines incarnating into this one right here in order to assist and correct humanity's evolutionary track so that we can basically course correct and it doesn't even just stop at a future soul coming back into this timeline we are in a simultaneous essence of all of your experiences being lived multi-dimensionally whether you look at them as stacked you know top to bottom bottom to top left to right or right to left if you look at it as a zigzag or you look at it in, as an oscillation these are all simultaneous times past present future happening all at once and if you've ever experimented with anything that takes you outside of the awareness of now and to um an outside the matrix moment and you've really understood from one you know, closing of the eyes to the opening of the eyes, there's a difference in where you are. There's a recognition that that's home, that that is a place of your actual origins, which is the universe itself. Whenever you've rejoined and you literally do see things in a 363 degree dimension, but it's not even just that, right? It's what we call 12th dimensional, if you will. And we're blinking in and out of these lifetimes, these simultaneous existences, but there is no true uh, connection that says that we weren't just dreaming, okay? You know, we have a dream. It can last for a long time. I've talked about love bites, which are linear and incredibly intense. Uh, we might go into some of that today. I'm not really sure. Uh, it's, it's, a fun, it's a fantastically mind-blowing experience and it's really great to um, realize you're not the only one having them if you have but uh, we'll see how it goes okay so long story short is we dream right some of us remember them some of us don't but when we wake up if we've remembered that dream uh, we're just here now and we know that we're here Okay, but whenever we go to sleep, we don't know all of the time that we are not where we've always been. It's normal to us. And that's the point of what I'm trying to express right here is that 
these things we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know how fast we're blipping in or out. And all of these, these timelines are merging at the moment. So as we realize more about ourselves, as we come into more of our power, as we you know, gather more information, as we understand what it means to take back our own power, and I would say that if anything, that's the question that I get the most. How do I take back my power? And I've, I've talked endlessly about this, okay? So it literally is all about you going into yourself and reclaiming it. It's a simple statement. We, we enter into a lot of different experiences where we are giving over to everything else. It starts with us having these what most people call supernatural abilities that we assume everybody else has. And then there comes a day when you realize that, oh no, you're the weird one, you know, the, the weird one. And there's a stigma that goes along with being called weird or strange or freak. And your gifts and your talents that are of the absolute for you while you're here, then get pushed to the side, they get filed away, you renounce them, and you basically hand them over to whoever will take them. And at that point starts your contractual agreement of you giving over your power. We get indoctrinated into society. We get indoctrinated by our parents. Our parents are following the words of their parents and the parents that came before them, right? And this goes for religion. It goes for different facets of spiritual groups. It goes for following anybody. And this is the biggest thing is that we have to really go inside and identify who we are. We have to literally call back our energy and all of our agreements in which we've given away our power. And if we do not do that, at some point during our process, you can pretty much guarantee that you are going to suffer a tremendous amount of infiltration. And again, these infiltrations happen predominantly through our relationships with the people who mean the most to us. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a <laughs> expl explanationary uh, situation that we have to go through here, right? Because why would you be targeted? That's a great question, okay? You're targeted because you did come here to affect change. And depending on your bloodline, depending on your DNA, it's very indicative to set off some massive alarms because you would be one of those beings that has um, a larger amplification of your org field. And those creatures, you know, beings, energies, let's just call them energies that live off of fear and ego and greed and suffering, anxiety, depression. And so, of course, we get triggered in many different emotional reactions that make us go into these lower states of human vibration, which does include manipulation and also um, agendas. Agendas is a very big one whenever we have an agenda to manipulate situations in order for us to control them because that's a part of our indoctrination is that we are here to control our lives. And that is, you know, true and untrue all at the same time because in order to really gain control, we have to release control, but we're not releasing it to others. And a lot of us have, right? We've let other people make decisions for us and also guide us into uh, certain avenues of our life. Go to school to do this or to do that. You know, marry this person or marry that person. Have kids, don't have kids. You know, build up a massive, right? Uh, debt whenever it comes to the financial system and our student loans is where it starts off with and it just keeps on going. Meanwhile, it's, it's, there's a whole system that's behind the scenes that many people are way more aware of right now than they have been at any other time in this entire human history, which has to do with you know, the, the food additives as well as everything that they have done to, um, you know, pollute our air and our 
energetics, basically. So this is a, a multifaceted conversation and it takes a lot of uh, overstanding. It takes a lot of study, but the problem is, is that so much of the information that will bring you to the ultimate awareness of all of this is very much fear-based because whenever you learn the truth of all that's happening again behind the scenes, it can definitely make a person incredibly fearful and resentful as well as angry. And guess what? That puts all of you right back into the category of where you are vibrating at those lower densities. And this is what universal law of cause and effect does not distinguish between. You may be very upset for all the right reasons. You may want justice for all the right reasons. But if you are stewing, if you're generating these negative emotions, if you're super pissed off at this wheel that's spinning, that's intention is literally to kill everybody that you love, that you know, that will, you know, is inhabiting planet Earth and is also coming in to inhabit it through, <laughs> through the soul activation of animating an avatar body. It's pretty hectic, okay? So a lot of us, for the right reasons, get very upset and start to um, wish that those who are spinning that wheel would get held accountable. And this is another large part of it. There's what we call the dark cabal and the governmental factors. It's like the black book groups. It's those who are off the grid, who are actually running the government and creating all of this system to really keep the human species suppressed. And it is for a really large agenda. Many people have always asked forever, why? Why would they do that? And, you know, I would love to supply you with every answer of why they do it. And it's, it's, it started way before we ever got here. I mean, we were born into this system. This is not new okay this has actually been documented in the emerald tablets which are dated to be over thirty six thousand years old and they are imprinted you know chiseled into like non-alterable of alchemically processed emerald green tablets written by thoth and if you're not familiar with Thoth, I would definitely look into <laughs> this whole energetic of the energy of Thoth. Thoth was a being who did reincarnate multiple times, also known as Hermes, Quetzalcoatl, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Nangshida. The list just kind of goes on and on. So the creator, the god of all knowledge, the god of astrology and astronomy and the written word and the Mayan calendar, all of this stuff. So this is, this is based in some pretty deep um, ancient history that has most definitely been stripped from the main population. So that whenever these topics come up, once again, just seems pretty fucking out there and batshit crazy. But now again, more than ever, we are finding tons and tons of archeological proof as well as astronomical proof that shows that we were visited by extraterrestrial origins at the beginning of this civilization and going even way further back. Earth is much older than we ever thought it was. Humanity is much older than we ever thought it was. Ancient Egypt is way older. Um, new ancient monuments are being found that even trump that, you know, going back to ancient Sumeria, the Atlanteans, and what I'm talking about with the Emerald Tablets was Thoth the Atlantean. And the Emerald Tablets start whenever Atlantis sank and they rose up in his ship and went to the land of the hairy barbarians and basically taught those who were there uh, all of the advanced technology and how to restart civilization once again. So none of this is new, okay? Thoth definitely lays it out there in the tablets about how this has been going on from eon to eon to eon. And yes, I've talked about that quite a lot, but this is need to know information for a starting point. There's also other ancient texts that I've also mentioned many times, such as the Enuma Elish, 
the Epic of Gilgamesh, and these really do depict the Anunnaki, the Sumerians, and all of the great battles, <laughs> the, the, the genetic manipulation that occurred to create these different types of bloodlines and why those that hold the position of high-level government and also uh, royal seats are those who have the pure royal DNA of the Anunnaki, and that is what is correlating to the RH negative, the O negative more specifically, and this accounts for a very small percentage of the human population. So whenever we get deeper into this topic, it's like an onion that just keeps unpeeling itself and more and more keeps revealing itself. And again, you can just go straight into this, bury your head under the covers and put the blinders over your eyes and just give, give the whole finger, middle finger to all of society and everyone because what's the fucking point, right? But the point is, is that there is power within your DNA. There's power within your energetic field. And so that's why you're targeted, okay? Energy amplifies. And in astrology, Neptune, the planet that rules over the zodiac sign of Pisces, which we correlate with the 12th house, is the collective unconscious. And if you're familiar with the work of Nassim Haramin, he has basically come up with the connected universe theory. And this is where we are on a quantum feedback loop. Energy is connected throughout all parts of creation. And as we are in this connected feedback loop, the energy in which you admit actually has a connection to the collective unconscious. So through that collective unconscious, through the Neptunian filter, you are basically uplifting or pulling down the collective. Through the unconscious spectrum, and mind you, the unconscious is not what's on the surface level. It's not what we are accessing through the awakened conscious mind when we're asleep, when we're in meditation, when we are having, uh, you know, journeys through maybe ingest, ingestation of psilocybin or dimethyltryptamine. Any of those sort of experiences will take you into those zones, but while we're here in consciousness, we're not at the same frequency and we're not able to access our unconscious through the conscious. Okay, so this gets a little bit tricky. And Neptune is known as the great dissolver. It represents discernment. And this is another huge part about where we have given over our personal power and where we have then become susceptible to these implants, these Archon attacks, as well as um, these infiltrations and gang stalking, okay? How this all works out is that whenever we are not in a state of awareness that we have personal power, where we feel like we are depleted, we could be depleted mentally, energetically, physically, and very much spiritually, without the curiosity to seek out information and travel the proverbial rabbit holes, then there's not a lot that there is like, it's like, what is this life? And who am I? What is creator? What is source? And always it's, there's a religion trying to offer you the, the answer to that question. And it seems like, oh my gosh, all these other people are following and they, they're having these major massive revelations and their lives are changed. So that must be the way to go. And many people, whether they're still involved in any sort of particular religion, have very much studied it, taken a trip down that lane, um, participated and there are many, many, many tricks to how this matrix game is set up. And the matrix is literally what this is. A lot of people have still not come to that awareness, but it, it's very simple. It's not even, you know, a fanciful idea at this point. It's simply that 
we are binary code. Everything in this universe is a programmed binary code system, just exactly like the computer and like the internet. And that's in our DNA structure. And we're all operating off these different codes. So whenever we give our power away, it's like whenever we hit the consent button on Apple, you know, a new version of iTunes or a new Adobe Photoshop and we hit consent, we don't read the statement of agreement that we're making. And that's, that's a very interesting metaphor to cross over into our own personal lives. Whenever we're saying certain things, believing certain things, handing over our own belief system for somebody else's because we're putting our trust into them. So Neptune will cause things to look very beautiful you know, very dreamy and full of uh, kind of like this etheric aura that draws us in. It's much like the feeling of uh, whenever people get baptized or they have some sort of spiritual experience, they have some sort of major revelation and they feel like they're born again. And it makes you very you like high on endorphins it's the dream world as well it's imagination it's creativity it's how we define source creator or whenever we leave the physical body what does that look like where do we go there is real no definition for it it's a realm that has no limits it has no boundaries it has no borders and it's existing all within a simultaneousness so it is literally an unutterable state. And to be unutterable, right, there's, there's no way to really translate it. So how do, we, how do we give these definitions for something that there really is no definition for? And so as we radiate in these energetic fields that connect to the quantum feedback loop and tie into the collective unconscious through the Neptunian filter, this is where things get foggy, they get confusing, they get hazy, we're not sure if we're making the right decision. And we start to get fearful about making the wrong choices in our lives because we have subjugated ourselves to punishment. A lot of what I'm talking about, I, I, I really choose to stay away from religious topics but whenever we get down to something like this we actually have to discuss it to some extent right because there's fear that if you don't do the right things that you're going to get sent to hell and nobody wants to get sent to hell right but is hell even real or is hell a perception that we create through our pgf whenever we are in these fear states. It's purgatory, right? But we can also perceive ourselves into what we would consider to be heaven. And as all time exists within the now moment, how could there be, you know? <laughs> but it, it, that's, that's one of those taboo topics. It's a very, very taboo subject to go into those levels of how deep indoctrination runs within particular individuals because these implants have been inserted within them. And these inserts go off, goes off based off of trigger words, such as an opposition to this idea, to, to the religion. And so now there is separation, there is war. And that is one of the biggest things. It seems like it's a very big no-brainer, war. How many people have died in the name of religion, forcing religion, and where we live within a system of free will. It was never meant our belief system, our heritage, our information that came from the stars to be literally ripped from us because that came with power. So many people travel to many different locations in this world and absolutely just murdered populations and entire cultures of people in order to suppress them. And there was always those beings who would not turn over their fate, but they paid the price, right? 
So consider that many of you who are here and that are listening to this are those beings that held firm to your fate. As well, many of you who are listening to this are what I call processional incarnators, meaning whenever we change through the ages based off the procession of the equinoxes. And these are those cycles of time. And those cycles of time bring us into different rulership and also different energy frequencies. We're moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, the procession, how the earth tilts on the wobble. It actually goes backwards from the direction that the planets transit. So we are going backwards in the processions, okay? And these processions last anywhere from 2100 to uh, about 26, 2700 years. And that is a big debate that nobody's come to an absolute conclusive, decisive answer on. So therefore we do not actually know where within the spectrum of time and space we actually are. Many believe that we are already in the age of Aquarius. Myself, I do believe this, but many still believe that we have a couple of hundred years to go anywhere between two to 400 years. So there's a lot of confusion. <laughs> this is that Neptunian vibration. Neptune again rules Pisces, the constellation, the zodiac sign, right? And we are in that age, the 12th house, the Neptunian confusion, the illusion, the Maya that has been put over us to veil the truth. And for anyone who seeks truth, they have to investigate it, okay? We can't just magically get handed all of the answers. This is what turning over your power does, is it puts you into a frequency of giving it away, um, that you have, you have dictated that somebody else has done all this again. They know, and now you're just subscribing to their way. But if you look at everything, including religion going back to Jesus, Jesus was very specific as Thoth, do not follow, <laughs> go inside. That this is very much a journey of the soul's recognition. We are spiritual beings. We are energy having an, having an experience within a physical form in order to be able to experience sensory percepts, perceptions, right? PGF, our perception generating filter. All of the neurons on, in our brain, they fire and they create electromagnetics that then go through us and create, again, this reality because we are collapsing the quantum particle wave into our own simulation. So we don't realize that we're the one here doing this. The power is given away to every single person but ourselves. So at a certain point, whenever you have understood that there is this whole system that is not in your face, that you have possibly gone through many different avenues of distractions and manipulation and you yourself have manipulated and controlled and, and experienced jealousy and that you live in fear and that you live in lack and that you're fully immersed into the mundane 3D matrix, third dimensional reality. Wake up, go to work or school, come home, study, or do, you know, cook dinner, take care of the family, do the dishes, go to bed, do it all over again. And this has all been set up so that there's not time or even energy left for you to care about what is actually happening. Many people don't. And that's one of the crazy parts is that whenever you yourself experience this awakening process, the first thing you want to do is talk about it. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is tell everybody that you know and that you care about what's going on and how to help themselves. And it just makes everything worse. People start to think that you're losing your mind and that um, you need help. And that really, really, really creates even more divide. But that is your higher self telling you, again, to go inside. This system of control, 
We want to influence. We want to gain notoriety. We want to be a solution to a problem. We want to be worthy. We want to be valuable. And so we put ourselves in a positions where we are literally setting ourselves up for failure. So through the awakening process is more and more gates that are honestly parts of self-sabotage that are unconscious. So we, we blindly walk into these situations having no awareness of what we're doing. And there's many archetypes within astrology that correlate to these systems, right? The, the archetype of Virgo is a big one that when once we go through the awakening process, we're assimilating information, we're seeing the world as it really is, and there's just problem after problem after problem after problem, and we're like, how is everybody just still asleep at the wheel like nobody's doing anything about any of this everybody's just going on along their way and now I have to take it upon myself to be critical and judgmental because the whole world has been critical and judgmental of me and now you don't realize that you're being critical and judgmental in the same exact way because it the intention is good right and this is where that whole statement about <laughs> the road to hell is paved with good intentions and it absolutely is because it's trading one thing for another so you realize everything that goes into the additives of food into um you know mass meat slaughter and then people become either vegetarian they become vegan and then there's a separation between those who are vegan and those who are not those who still consume uh, <laughs> mass marketed beverages that contain high fructose corn syrup, monosodium glutinate, aspartame, neotame, the list just fucking goes on and on. And it's amazing. It's really amazing because now we're judging, right? We're judging harshly too. We can't, we can no longer be friends. And that is the most, like, it's such a turnoff that we wonder why, you know, why doesn't people want to come over here? Why don't people want to like have, uh, you know, acai bowls for breakfast every day and totally drink spirulina and chlorella like 24 seven and, and meditate in ashrams for like eight hours a day and travel to Tibet and sit with yogis. And, and I mean, the list, I, <laughs> I'm totally just, making fun at the moment, not being serious, but also being serious, right? We, we've encountered these systems and situations in our lives, and it gets very tiresome. It gets very tiresome because nobody is, is really stepping up to the plate and just living by a, a fully actualized example that is here to just simply inspire by being. So if you still desire to have some sort of control over anyone else, whether it's because you're trying to control them for what you've dictated to be the right reasons for them to better their health, their wellness, to wake up to the, the system, whatever it is, this is a, a force of control that creates negative karma. Karma works in multiple directions. It's both positive and it's negative. And this is something that each and then each of us define as an individual. What I define as negative, you might define as positive. And what I define as positive, you may see as very negative. So there is no, there is no across the board. There is no, this is where we start judging from marker. Okay, so it, it becomes the same. You become the same. And there has to be the steps that come after that with the self-realization that no, you can't force the world to work better at any cost because that literally disseminates the inner self. And it really does have a backlash of being, you know, cosmically <laughs> set up for some punishment. And you know, what's punishment to me and what's punishment to you? So there, there's a long, a long, <laughs> a long series of events that come to a silence and an awareness because a lot of people who go on this journey they're not happy because they're living in fear 
they're also sometimes not healthy because they're not listening to their body. Okay. This is a great debate. Do we just live off animals? Do we just live off plants? Do we live off plants and animals? Do we trust society to mass market our food? Do we grow it ourselves? And it's like, you know what? We're here on this fucking planet and everything is based off of your belief. And that's what we eventually get to is that it doesn't matter what anyone believes. It doesn't matter what anyone does. It honestly doesn't. The only person that has any sort of effect on this is you within yourself in reference to yourself. So say you go down the rabbit hole studying everything about organic, vegetarianism, veganism, the whole list. There's so many different terms for everything now. And your body starts to have a negative reaction and you're forced to listen to your body. You're forced to go back to some of the ways that you operated before incorporating more meats and, you know, all that other stuff. And now there's the shame. Now there's the guilt. Now there's the fear. It's the same as religion. Are you going to heaven or hell? It's, it's literally the same. So the process continues, right? <laughs> the process seriously continues. And, and then if you're not happy and you're not healthy and you're still in a state of lack because you've also denounced the entire system that has to do with money, possessions, the nicer things in life, you know, you stop shaving, you stopped using deodorant, you stopped all this stuff. That's not exciting. <laughs> And that's not meant to be a diss, but it's like, there's, there's so much control over that. You're expressing so much control over that, that you're not in line with allowing yourself to be a fully actualized energetic form who realizes it has the power within itself to bring back all of those contractual agreements that you have given out by consenting and saying, yes, because they told me that 5G technology, Wi-Fi and chemtrails have nanotechnology and mind control technology and that they are going to decimate my DNA. They're going to disintegrate it. They're going to cause me, you know, a whole bunch of different types of neurological disorders and also just issues that this is another system that it's going to kill everybody that I know. So now you have 100% given your power over. You have consented to all of that stuff having those exact effects on you. And this is hard to wrap your mind around. It really is. I mean, I was vegan for 10 years. I was militant. I was on Rasta fire. Like I was at the top of Selassie I Mountain. <laughs> like I'm not even playing like, so I mean, you know what I'm saying by that, but I was tripping balls, okay? And I had the best intentions ever, but I could literally chemically ingrediently break down every single thing that was in every single thing. And it would just kill me to watch people put it in their system. I was one of those people. No, I couldn't be friends with you if you drank soda. Uh -uh. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a television in my house forever. I, I wouldn't even, you know, keep a cell phone near me. It's like I, OCD is like I went way far. And, I, and as I've awakened further, as I've gained more information, as I've gone inside and gained more awareness, I'm honestly super surprised that I made it. I'm super surprised that I'm alive. You know, now I understand my own power. I've taken back all of those contracts. Now I dictate if 5G is good or bad. And you know what? 5G is a bomb diggity, <laughs> you know, like nano particles, aluminum particles. Those are actually good for my lungs that get sprayed from chemtrails, you know, weather altering technology like harp, all the shit that's going on with CERN and Switzerland. Bring it on, baby bring it. But power belief is really, really real. 
It's really, really real. So you really got to get in there. And when I mean in there, I mean into the subconscious. And there's only a couple of ways to do this. Whenever we talk about implants that happen within the energy, physical body of ourselves, um, we're predominantly talking about these types of implants that keep our left and right hemispheres of our brain separate. The work of Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, and Joe Dispenza, write those names down. Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza. These three individuals have done a tremendous amount of life work based on how to get into the subconscious and reprogram, how to connect the left and the right hemispheres of the brain, which is something that we call super consciousness. And I'm not going to give those modalities here. I, I, I you know, blink and, and spread them around all the time. It's so simple and it's so easy and it doesn't take time but it takes consistent and constant practice because many people are looking for the cure-all. You know, any of this stuff becomes the cure-all, the instant magical pill that you take and you lose weight, the instant magical pill that you take and you awaken to source consciousness, the instant pill that you take and you don't deal with shit no more. And that is the biggest falsity. That's the biggest falsity because literally, Everything in this matrix is binary code. You upgrade your system, the matrix upgrades its system. We're all connected, okay? There is no just in here privacy. It's all within the collective feedback loop. And this is something that we all need to be aware of because whenever we're inside of our own mind talking mad shit, thinking mad evil doer thoughts, and we're just like, yeah, everything's great. You know, it's all good. Yeah, girl. Yeah, dude. You know, all this other stuff, smiling in people's faces and internally, you know, um, <laughs> slashing and dashing them, whatever you're doing to them, continuing to have arguments in your mind after you've already left the situation, pre-having arguments in your mind before they've ever even happened. You know, all these things. That is literally happening. Okay. That is not a mystery anymore. What goes on inside of your own mind is actually physiologically re responding through your physical body and through the chemicals that your brain releases. So as within, so without, okay? You're literally creating this right now. I am a part of your subconscious that is perceiving itself. I'm a part of your subconscious who has come through to you in a free will situation because you have searched for this information. And so here's a part of yourself speaking to yourself from a dynamic that you're able to understand and to process. So yes, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But at the end of all of this, the realization process that we all come through is that we don't need to force anything to be anything because all of it is within our own control through the choice that we make to continue to not compare ourselves to the next person, to not judge ourselves through the eyes of others. And because we ourselves are such a judgmental society. We think that everybody else is judging us. So that's our natural mode of operation. That's the natural Virgoian filter. Oddly enough, Virgo represents a sixth house of the zodiac. It's ruled by Mercury, who I mentioned was Thoth and all the other incarnational aspects, and actually opposes to the 12th house. So Virgo is representing health and wellness, our daily routines. It's what I reference as being quantum biology and epigenetics, which is the work of Bruce Lipton, Greg Braden, and Joe Dispenza, and how to really go within from a whole nother dynamic. Use your mind to go within into your heart. If we are constantly in this chatter mode, then we are just in this state of disarray. We're, we're not even in our own space. We're in the past, we're in the future. We're, we're, we're still at work. We're still, you know, having sex with our partner. We're, we're in a hundred different places. We're shopping at the grocery store in our head. 
I mean, I mean, it's just endless. And most of it has to do with dread. So we continue to give over our power, even after we awaken to this realization that this is in our control because we don't still firmly believe it yet. And then we start to realize, oh my gosh, there's so much more to the story, even because now, now we're starting to understand that it's all interconnected. Because if everything that's in here is happening out there, then that means that even the planets and the stars and the galaxies and the universes beyond our own are actually inside. And how is that? You know, how, how is that? From, from how, how do we train our brain to then be able to rework itself? This is what going into super consciousness, the left and right hemispheres of the brain is all about because if you are in a split brain and somebody offers you information a new idea it literally puts you into fight or flight mode it in fight or flight mode actually lowers your iq so that you become tunnel vision on escape so that if something is chasing you you can run for your mofo in life and you're not like oh my god look there are deer <laughs> Oh my God, your hair looks so good today. And running, you know, it's just like you have tunnel vision, you're beeline in it, you're running for your damn life. So this is the, the, the physiological response that our body has. And as we go through these responses, because we always want to be the best, we want to be the one who's right. We want to be the one with the answers again. And there is no answer for anyone, you, you can provide the answers for yourself through your own exploration, but you can't provide them for anyone else. So formats of doing the work, stepping up, living your mission, it has to do with putting yourself in a place where others can come to you through free will action, just like you've come here today. And you have a choice to stop this video and never watch anything again, or you have the option to continue and watch all the time. It doesn't really matter because it has no effect on me as this individual. And this is a part of our evolutionary cycle that we have a very hard time with is not taking things personally. Every single time that you take something personally, you consent to giving your power away and therefore you become much more uh, infiltrated and inundated with Archon implants and all this other sort of infiltration. So yes, we've gone on and off topic. We've come back around <laughs> and we'll, we'll continue to go that route because that's what this is. I'm not, I haven't written down a script for any of this. This is literal living life within this matrix system. And as an RH negative individual, as a walk-in, as someone who's done the work and consistently always doing the work, there is no end to this. And that's the point. There's literally no end. We can't just do all this deep, deep soul intensities and then, and then go take a nap and that's it. But also we don't have to be hard on ourselves and, you know, you're not doing enough comparing yourself to everyone else because no, <laughs> no, you can't, there is nobody else here, you know, like Ma Neo in the matrix. There is no spoon. That's the trick to bending the spoon. There is no spoon. So the trick to hacking the universe and hacking your own mind and empowering yourself is that there is no self. There is no universe. There is no mind. So you have to come into a stillness. You have to come into the super consciousness. You have to come into an ascended perception that has no agenda. No agenda. You don't need to agree. You don't need to disagree. This is a process of you discovering yourself so that you are the one who has all of your power with you. So you can state it out loud. You can write it down. You can burn it. You can do a ritual of whatever sorts that you like. 
a, a ritual is just something that you do with energy put behind it, right? And what you do those rituals on are, you know, awareness, self-awareness is such key because, geez, how many people have just given over power to dark forces thinking that they're going to cast a love spell and that their perfect partner is going to come in or, you know, that person that you so badly want to be with to the point where you're willing to not just physically, but also energetically manipulate them, get them to break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend and come to be with you. And you're, you're even willing to sacrifice to something like that, that you know isn't even real because there's so much lack, because there's so much comparison and so much judgment of the self as to what you should have versus what you do have. And, you hear everyone across the board talk about an attitude of gratitude and that, you know, the mere act of hunger, as Buddha said, is what creates hunger. The mere, the mere desire for food to satisfy hunger creates the lack and the desire for hunger. Isn't that ironic? So then we go back to Dr. Strange, you know, <laughs> whenever the ancient one is telling him that, no, you have to surrender. You have to release control in order to gain control. And that's like, what? Never heard of that shit in my life. Because from birth till now, it's been a massive, massive life of learning how to control everything. You know, what don't we try to control? So... Yes, this will be an ongoing topic on this sort of level where it's outside of um, the ast astrological videos that I do. But this is the Virgoian filter where the mind tries to control and judge and compare and also take things very personally. So this is how you get infiltrated, okay? You get into relationships, you get into friendships, you get into business partnerships. You have expectations and conditions that certain events are going to happen in certain ways because you have dictated them that way. And if all of those who are involved do not basically submit and perform at the level in which you have designated, then there's issues. But then what happens whenever, you know, you're that being who's really open hearted, you're the one who's really coming to the table without the expectations, without the conditions, and you really are allowing each individual to truly be their highest manifested self. And guess what shit still happens, okay? Yes, it does. There's nothing personal in this matrix game. This is literally about those who have control and those who don't. And as long as you stay in the illusion, the better that they have, the better time that they have, you know, the dark forces who want to continue to control you. That's the best time for them ever. But not everybody is at the same level. They're not meant to be. Each soul has its own designated free will contract for whenever these opportunities arise, these gates that they could walk through as far as evolution goes on their own journey, or they don't have to. You can choose to participate or not. That's basically our choice. That's what we can control. We can participate or not. Okay? So we're involved with a lot of people who are not choosing to participate. And therefore, they are the ones who are susceptible to these mind control technologies and these archon implants, these triggerings that go off, not just based off of planetary, uh, you know, aspects, but highly are the transits. And that's why I'm making this video at this particular time is astrologically speaking, a lot of these transits are in high effect that do make it easier for us to be mentally and spiritually infiltrated as well as physically so many people right now are being are going through extraordinary bouts of um, lack of energy through parasitic info infestations inside their own body which are literally draining the life out of them 
they have mental fog and fatigue. They are literally not able to transmute negative energy into positive energy. No positive affirmations, no meditation is helping. They don't have any more passion left in them. And passion is ruled over by Mars. And Mars is, you know, if, if we're not getting that juice, if the blood isn't pumping through our veins, then we're not in go mode. We don't have a reason to get out of bed. We're, we're not excited about anything. It's like having um, the libido cut off. <laughs> so it's not that you're not even just interested in subjects or topics or pastimes, you know, hobbies. It's like you're not even interested in, in your sexual partner or even having one. And all of life has lost its luster. And pretty much you're just worried as fuck about what's happening to you, you know, and then health issues start to come to a massive forefront. And then you look around and you read and it's like, oh, okay, well, I live near this um, cell tower that's pumping out 4G. Now they're going to pump 5G. Now I need, you know, <laughs> uh, like a, I, need, I need to coat my house in a tinfoil. And they're spraying chemtrails all over. They're doing this. They're doing that. And then it's like, there goes your power all over again. And these things do play an effect because they are created to infiltrate your subconscious. It doesn't matter if they're spraying water vapor. Like they could be spraying pure water vapor that is like infused with colloidal silver and it could actually be making the planet more healthy. But because we were told, and because we believe that it's doing the total opposite, guess what? It's gonna do the total opposite. They've already done so many studies with placebo pills, like don't even play with this one. Do not even play with this one. The placebo is almost always more effective than the actual pill of whatever it is. So these sort of things are placebos. They don't even have to put the financial backing behind technologies and additives to make these things. They just got to put out the information and that's it. That's it. So take back your power. Do not consent to that type of stuff. Like don't do not consent to something being your own demise. Because that's exactly it. Why do some people attract certain experiences that other people never even came close to having? These are frequencies. These are energies. You yourself as the planet has a frequency energetic resonance. And like attracts like dead ass. It really does. So whenever you're out there searching for information, recognize the place that you're at. Are you looking for things to tell you that you're wrong, you're bad, and you're going to die? Or are you looking for things that are like this? You've come across something that's literally showing you an example of taking your power back and telling you that there's no one else here who could take it from you. That you give it over with your free will. So there is no such thing as a victim. And that one, a lot of people don't want to hear that because the only thing that they think they have going for them is that they've been a victim. And no, because cells, they regenerate. And they can regenerate instantaneously whenever you learn how to go inside and communicate with yourself as the divine being that you really are. And whenever you realize that you are creator source, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes with that. You know, I don't want to be, I'm not, I'm not creator source because religion has taught me that that is disrespectful and I ain't shit, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my God. There, there are levels, there are layers, there's just taking away and taking away. And honestly, I really didn't even have any intentions to go into all of this like this deeply 
but it goes together. It really does. Because then you come into the awareness about the blood types. You come into awareness about your lineage. You come into awareness that now everything that is actually transpired in your life can be explained through so many different ways that actually are empowering to you. Every one of your disempowering situations that you've ever been through, anything that ever classified you as being a victim is beyond comprehension at this point as being a part of the process of your self waking you up to yourself. We have so many different things, but what about my bills? Where am I gonna get money? I don't have any skills. How, what, why? Why don't you have any skills? Because you think that the only way to have skills is to have gone to school and got a degree or for somebody else to come and tell you that you have skills? Do you know yourself? Have you, have you taken yourself out and learned on a deep level what those skills are? And then you know what's so crazy is that whenever people know that their talents and their abilities are profound, that they're here to be a healer, they're here to shine the light, they're here to affect consciousness in a positive way. Now they're still in self-judgment mode and they don't want to put themselves out there on something like YouTube because the comment section, they don't want people to um, have some sort of alternative idea than them. Well, shit, nobody needs to agree with you. You know, the biggest thing that I get is that I cussed and I don't give a fuck. So literally, it's like I've mentioned so many times, don't even bother commenting because literally, I just don't care. I don't. That's me. And I'm not here to live for whoever the fictitious bro code is on that other side. Like, I don't know who you are. So now I'm supposed to live my life according to you. But these are all of the different layers. There is no attachment to whether you agree or whether you disagree. Doesn't matter because that doesn't actually change me. Doesn't make me more worthy or less worthy because who am I judging my worthiness based off of? I'm the only one. I don't consent to having anyone have that kind of control at all. Not in any way, shape or form. Nope. And this is something that gets very tricky because it's easier when we're talking about strangers. It's much harder whenever we're talking about our friends, our family, and our lovers again. And how all of these infiltrations play out because this sort of talk, you know, I don't have kids and I don't plan on having kids whatsoever. Those of you who do have kids and you want to take your place and you want to share this information you want to put it out there into the public forum but you're going through a custody battle and your baby mama baby daddy is now using this against you bringing it into a court of law trying to paint you as having a mental illness or um you know need for help and and that's tragic honestly that's that's very very sad but that is an infiltration that is an archon implant because that does generate the sensation of retaliation it puts you into fear it puts you into everything of worry and if we're talking about custody we're talking about court we're talking about lawyers we're talking about um court fees and there's these energies that are putting different pieces onto the chess table in order for you to go through these experiences because as you level up your game again the matrix levels up its game and it starts to respond so however you can be attacked is how you get attacked and you can have these you know step out of the matrix moments only to get pulled right back into it. So it becomes a practice of discipline ship. The planet Saturn, the sign, the zodiac sign of Capricorn, which is associated with the 10th house of the zodiac, 
is all the representation of having discipline ship, having integrity, using your wisdom, studying. <laughs> Saturn is the Lord of karma, the Lord of time. Saturn monitors the rainbow bridge into the light body activation. And what does light body activation mean? It means something different for everybody. And it doesn't mean that we're going to turn into, you know, something else. It doesn't mean that we're going to have anything happen to us. It really doesn't. How you decide that, what that means to you, that's what that means to you. Is it going to happen from a solar flash? Is it going to happen from you know, I mean, asteroid hitting the planet. It's, it, there's so many different things like Armageddon all over, all over, all over, like a million times. Death, 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 death. <laughs> you know, only the 144,000 chosen ones are going to go. So you better become a part of this or a part of that. You better go fucking rile the troops. Come on now. I hope that this is just showing you the literal example. You know, I live by my example. I, I do not put out anything that I do not do myself. And I did all this myself before I came on to this public forum. And I've been so blessed to be so successful because I know I'm successful. I'm not giving it over the power to have other people make me unsuccessful. And this is, this is a part of our projection system that we're already putting out there before we even get to the part where we step up and take our place. Because yes, you've defined all these amazing things that you're talented at, but I do this and I do that and I do this and I do that. And I don't just focus on one thing. Who said you had to focus on one thing? Does any of this sound like one thing? Hell no. Those Non-one things are the most interesting things that are out there because it is all-inclusive. <laughs> all of this that's revolving around is all-inclusive. It's a togetherness. So you, as you've experienced life, that's Jupiter, Sagittarius, the ninth house. You go on your experience of your soul's mission. And then you use that wisdom to be disciplined, to create your legacy. And what is your legacy? Do, do you have to have a legacy that, that marks you as here or here or here or here? What is that based off of? So that's part of that surrender. That's letting go of control. Whenever you silence your mind, you come into super consciousness. Whenever you take your power from everything that's out there, even all of those people that we've been talking about, pull your energy back in. A lot of us don't realize how much is just scattered all over the planet with so many other people. We don't realize that when we're in our head making all these decisions, we're creating alternate timelines. We're fracturing ourselves. We're not whole any longer. We're not holistically whole any longer. We're out there in a million pieces, not knowing who we are. We're, we're living this option. We're living that option. We're living this relationship. We're living that relationship. Grass is always greener, better job, better car, better house, better money, better, 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 better. And there's no sort of moment now living where you can even process what's happening here. To process what's happening here is to process what's happening here. That may sound cliche, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> There's so many mind blowing experiments within medicine and science that can just show you how clear your power is how strange reality is, how profound consciousness is, how vast the universe and beyond is. And it's all representing what's directly inside because nothing outside exists. Crazy, so crazy. So whenever we're trying to let go of control, Realize you're only battling with your own mind. 
The mind is set up to literally trick you so that you can evolve. It's like a self-aware evolving program who sets up new simulations for you each and every time that you need to experience something for the process of growth to occur. And again, within your own experience, you are choosing to participate or not to participate. So, yeah, this video is getting kind of long and we have talked about a lot, but the end all be all is literally, if you're going through anything right now where you feel like you're helpless, you feel like life is out of control, like you have no power, like you have no say, like everything that you know has rendered you to a state that you don't know anything, that you feel like the world is against you, if you're on the other side, still jealous, still envious, still manipulating and controlling situations involved or involved with or a narcissist yourself, involved in codependencies, whether that's with people, relationships, or substances, it's all the same. The main point of this today is to really remind you of who you are and that there's nobody else out here, including myself, who's actually in there, who has any sort of power over you. You are the one who is here to experience the self through your own perceptions and to continue to be the alchemist who understands that energy is the basis of all. The information, light, sound, frequency are the natural building blocks of this crazy quantum existence. And that you, as this awareness that you see yourself as, is so multidimensional and so multifaceted that this is just a blip of a dream within your entire spectrum of cosmic orientation, the actual creator of the universe. This is how a creator experiences itself. And why wouldn't we? Of course. <laughs> So, yeah, I feel like, geez, we didn't really like fully get into the blood. We didn't fully get into the star seeds, but we're going to, okay? Next week, uh, from this perspective of where this is being recorded, we are going to go deeper into each individual blood type and um, have a couple of different looks at it, as well as the star seed origins that are correlated with these locations because that is a big part of it but to get back to what i was saying these are not easy times we didn't come to earth or inject ourselves into this matrix for things to be simple we're elsewhere we're transcendental we're multi-dimensional we are always elsewhere and we are always right here. So you, with awareness, okay? Because it's like words can get so twisted. Oh, I could just make my life whatever I want. And no, it's not like that either. It's really not like that either. It's whenever you release your expectations and you release the self-imposed controls that were forcing a dictation of things. And you open yourself up by living in the moment to the universe showing up for you because there's no way to predict how spontaneous, surprising, amazing, and revolutionary the universe is whenever you just let it be. The only person that we're stubborn against here is ourselves. We're the only ones that are buying into these rules or into these beliefs. So take that power. Take that power within yourself and, and redirect it. 
bring it back into you as a whole being. And just with awareness, no self-judgments, no self-judgments whatsoever. Just with awareness, observe yourself. Observe if your mind goes automatically to negative, judgmental thoughts, or if it goes to positive thoughts which don't have any sort of like massive, just everything attached to it. I know you know what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> The list goes on and on and on. Oh, on and on and on and on. Right? So, yes, we will be back. And I am so grateful for all of you who did tune in. If this is the kind of information that resonates with you and inspires you, definitely please like and subscribe and share with others. It may need just an alternative perspective because all these are perspectives and some of them are the actual key which will unlock your own empowerment. But nothing is ever here to follow. Nothing is ever here as a rule of thumb. What works for some will not work for others, but the end-all be-all goal is to really and truly be free. But what does freedom mean to you? That's a good question, right? <laughs> All right. So I love you so very much. And I thank you for your time as well as your energy. And God bless.